In this video, we're going to create an international hotel booking form. So we're going to start out with our form, our action, which we'll just leave blank, and our method, which we'll pass in get. Then we have our field set and our legend. And we're actually going to have two different field sets. So for this field set, I'm going to say personal details inside the legend. Then we're going to create some inputs. We're going to start off with an input of type text. We're going to give this a name of username. We're also going to pass in an ID of name. And we're going to pass in required as we want this field to be filled out and autofocus so the user can start typing as soon as the page is loaded. And we'll put in a placeholder. And here we'll just enter in your username. And we'll have a pattern. And for the pattern, what we want to do is allow any amount of letters as long as it's greater than three whether that be uppercase or lowercase. So we'll do A hyphen Z in lowercase, then capital A hyphen capital Z, and then we will allow a minimum of three, just like that. Also want to pass in the title, so we can give the user a helpful hint if they enter in any information that does not match this pattern. So there is our username input. Let's give this a label. And as you may have noticed, I've already given this input a ID. So we can just say for name and just put username. Right, so that input is all set up and ready to go. Now what we wanna do is we wanna have an input field of type text. We'll actually be using this to enter in emails, but we want to use the pattern to prevent any invalid email addresses. So we type equals text, we'll give this a name of email. Then we'll give it an ID of email as well for a label that we'll create in a second. And we also want this one required. And we'll give this a placeholder of your email and then we'll pass in a pattern so we want to allow lowercase and uppercase letters starting with a minimum of three then we want the at symbol then we want some more letters a to z lowercase and uppercase we want a minimum of three of them as well. And then we want a full stop. And we just want one of them. So we just enter in a static value, i.e. just one value. So there has to be one full stop right there. Then we'll enter in some more letters. So lowercase a to lowercase z, uppercase a to uppercase z. We want a minimum of two also pass in a title here as well. Please enter in a valid email address. So now we can go ahead and add the label for this input for email as we've already created the ID of email for this input. Right, so now we want a phone input so the user can enter in their phone number when making a booking. So we'll start off with an input of type tell, then a name of phone, and an ID of phone as well. Also want this field to be required, and the placeholder will be please enter in your phone 
number. And the pattern for this one will be something like this. So we want to allow numbers from 0 to 9. We want to allow 4 of them. No more, no less. Followed by a space. The numbers 0 to 9. We want 3 of them. No more, no less. A space. Some more numbers. 0 to 9. And exactly 3 of them as well. So now let's pass in the title. Please enter in a phone number in this format. And we'll add our label. For phone. And putting phone. Now we're going to add a select element so the user can actually select their country. So we just add in our select element, just like this. Pass in a name attribute and give that a value of country. And I'm also going to pass in the required attribute because we require them to actually select a country. So required. Then we'll pass in our options. And what I'm going to do for this first option, I'm going to leave the value blank. So by default, there'll be a blank option selected. Now to make this valid HTML, we can leave this value attribute blank, but we must also put in a blank space here. This will allow us to validate our form and have it validate successfully. So then the other options, I'm just going to put in some countries. The first one, I'm going to put in US and put US. This text doesn't have to actually match this value attributes value in there. Put in one for the UK. And one more for Australia. AUS. Right, so now we have our select element complete. We actually have our first section of this form completed. Our field set is complete. So now we can go ahead and put in a line break just to separate this first section from this next section. And we're going to put in our second field set. As field sets are used to group related inputs. So these are related as they are relating to personal details. And these will be related because they'll be related to booking details. So for the legend, I'm going to put booking details. Then we can add in some more inputs. So we're going to start off with an input of type date. I'm going to give this a name of date. And we're also going to pass in a minimum value because we don't want the user to book a date in the past. That wouldn't really make sense. So remembering the actual format for the date as it is submitted, we use the year, hyphen the month, hyphen the day. So in this case, I'm going to say a minimum value of today's date. So that'll be 2013 hyphen 12 hyphen 02. Then I'm going to close the date input just like that. Now we're going to put in an input of type number. Give this a name of number of guests. Then we're going to say we can have a minimum of one guest and an absolute maximum of six guests booking for the same hotel room, I assume, and close it just like that. Now we're actually going to have a paragraph and we're going to say, do you require meals? And under here, we're going to have some radio buttons. So an input of type radio, I'm going to give this a name of meals and a value of yes meals. And a second input of type radio. Give this a name matching the previous radio button. 
has to form some kind of radio button group and give us a value of no mils. So now I want to put in a line break to separate this next input. And this next input is going to be of type checkbox. And it's going to have a name of balcony. Basically asking whether the user would like a balcony for their hotel room. And we're going to put in the value of yes. And by default, we're going to say checked. So now that we have our second field set complete, I'm going to go ahead and add in a button. So I've added in this images directory inside our HTML directory, and we're going to use this button instead of the standard or default submit button. So I'm actually going to put an input of type image right under here, under a line break, and put our input of type image right here. So input type image, source attribute, we've got to navigate to the images directory. We can do that by just saying images, forward slash, and then the actual file name, which is just button.png. And close it just like that. So go ahead and save this and take a quick look in the browser. As you can see, we have some kind of form. We have our first field set and our second field set. But before we try and submit this and validate it using the online validator, I'm just going to add in some labels so we can actually see what is what. So we'll start off by adding a label for our date input. For, call this date, booking date. And give this an ID as always to match the labels for attribute, so date. And give this one a label. Four equals, we'll call this number of guests. And number of guests. And an ID to match that labels for attribute, number of guests. Now we'll add some labels for our radio buttons. Call this yes meals and yes. Then our ID of yes meals. Another label for our second radio button. Call this no meals and no. Then an ID of no meals. And finally, a label for our checkbox. We'll call this one balcony. Do you require a balcony? And an ID to match the labels for attribute. Balcony. Right. Just to recap what our form is actually doing at the moment. We have our first field set, which contains personal details. So this first field set is containing related input fields, details about the person or the user. And the second field set is containing input fields that relate to the person or the user's booking details. So that's how we use field sets to group related input fields. So now we're going to add in an action. We're going to call this destination.html. Now we're going to create that HTML file. But right click on the HTML directory, selecting new file and typing in the file name. Destination.html. Put a T in there. Now we're going to head and double click this to open it in the text editor. Type out our basic HTML5 document structure. Our head and our meta tag for the character set or the char set utf-8 our title just calling this destination and our body in the body I'm actually going to use a level 2 heading and say this is the destination form sorry 
destination.html file, I should say. Right, so we're going to go ahead and save this. And save this now that we've got our action and our method set up. And we are using an image instead of our general submit button. We actually should be passing in an alternate text attribute. So if the image cannot be rendered for whatever reason, including the image not being found at that relative URL, we should pass in text so that would be rendered as a kind of fallback solution. So now that we've entered in our alternate text, let's go ahead and save this and check it out in the browser and have a go at submitting our form. So I'm going to go ahead and just click submit without entering in any details. Please enter in more than three letters. So that's our pattern attribute doing that for us. And now we're prompted to enter in a valid email address. So I'm going to put example at example.com and submit. And now we're prompted to enter in a valid phone number in the form of four numbers, space three numbers, space three numbers. As you can see, our select element is actually displaying a blank value. So if we click submit, please select an item in the list. So I'm going to go ahead and select Australia. Now we can go ahead and select the booking date. We can't actually go back in time. We can only go into the future or select today's date. So I'm going to select today's date. And we're only allowing one to six. So we can only select a number between one and six for the number of guests. So let's select three of them. Do you require meals? We can either select yes or we can either select no. We cannot select both of them at the same time. So that makes sense. We're going to say yes. And do you require a balcony? I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that. So clicking on our button, we can see that our form has been sent to the destination.html file. And we have our query string containing all of the data that we've entered into the form including our mouse coordinates for the image where we've clicked on the actual submit image. Right, so let's head on over to validator.w3.org and let's validate this file. So go to forms, open and click check. This document was successfully checked as HTML5, passed with two warnings. Let's check out these warnings. As you may already know, we'll always get the using experimental feature HTML5 conformance checker warning, while HTML5 is not set in stone. So we have this other warning regarding the date input type. The date input type is not supported in all browsers. Please be sure to test and consider using a polyfill. So basically that's letting us know that the input field of type date may not work consistently among browsers and platforms. Hopefully one day soon in the future, this will actually be a recommendation or be fully supported because it's actually a really cool input type and it's very helpful. So there we go. We have a valid form in HTML5.